everyone. I'm sorry I've got to keep the noise down. I made a live just now, which I've had to delay it because it says some pretty wild shit on there. Um, I have to be aware of the words that I use, but I what I will be doing is I will be uploading my own website where I release censored material on it so you guys can see it. Um, well, my fellow TIs can see it and no one else can see it, but um, what I talked about in that video was the amount of people that were obsessed over me and I am going to try to keep a lid on my emotions as I run down all the different obsessions that have been, that I've experienced in my life. Now, before I get to that, I want to run through a theory with you guys, right? The thing is, is that what happens is that um, in order to get a, a read on your frequency or your frequency signature, it relies on your frequency signature having a certain amount of density, which means your energy has to be dense. You've heard of dense frequencies that can only be um, achieved through anger or fear or anything like that. It's usually low frequencies or you know lower vibrations that densify your energy and make it more concentrated, which in turn makes you easier to read for the electronic weapons to be able to be fired on you effectively. Now, what normally ends up happening is um, because the gang stalking is not having the effect on me that it should have, what will normally happen is that psychotropic weapons will be fired on anybody who's the most emotionally vulnerable or the most susceptible to narcissistic narcissistic or sociopathic behavior um so it can be somebody who's emotionally vulnerable or again subject to narcissistic and sociopathic behavior and this is what i believe is actually happening right now i think <coughs> Because there isn't enough read, isn't enough of a read of my energy in order for the DEW to be effective, I think that what is actually going on is that psychotropic weapons are being fired on the family above me, um, causing them to have like heightened anxiety, heightened depression, and specifically heightened psychosis. Because remember, DEWs affect your hormonal output. And depending on where the weapons are fired, it can cause psychosis in a person. It can, like, originate that, especially if you're in an environment where there's lots of non-ionized radiation around. It can really have an effect on your mind. So I think that what's going on is the reason why one particular person is obsessed over me is because they're having the psychotropic weapons fired on them. So I don't think it is entirely them and their fault but as I said in the previous life that I've taken down I don't have any sympathy for these people because at the end of the day this whole harassment thing started in the first place over nothing like it usually starts over nothing it started over a fucking laugh it started over nothing over nothing so I have no sympathy for any of these people right now and what I have to do now is I have to go through a rundown that kind of that kind of coincides with everything that I've experienced so far. So the first instance where I became aware of gang stalking was when I was living with my dad and we had a family living above us. It was a fe family of all females and all of them were involved in stalking and harassing me. That's true. But... Um, I think they were using electronic weapons, but that I don't know for sure. I've said that they were, but the truth is I don't know for sure. All I know is that I heard two kids, the two um, daughters next door, bragging about using something that can mess with my radio. They pressed a button or something and it messed with my radio because I was using analog radio at the time. So they bragged about that, but there was always... <sighs> The younger sister was always obsessed with me and the excuse she came up with is the reason why she was so obsessed with me and she kept going on and on and on even when the mother and bigger sister told her to knock it off was because she didn't want me hurting her. That's not the reason why she was obsessed with me. The reason she was obsessed with me 
was because she was emotionally vulnerable, she had narcissistic and sociopathic tendencies already, and so if there were any psychotropic weapons being used on them, then she was going to get the brunt of it. And younger children, and especially females and mentally ill people, are really easy to, to use on them. I remember, like, I've been aware of gang stalking since my early 20s, but I remember a conversation I had with a so-called friend who basically turned around to me and said, why aren't you going crazy? Why aren't you going crazier than you are? And I thought it was a weird thing to say. But then I remembered that, but now I look back, I think, yeah, psychotropic weapons were fired on me. Just like they were fired on this little girl who kept obsessing over me every single day. <coughs> every single day, it was mad girl this, mad girl that, mad girl the other. It, it was an obsession. It was an obsession and it did not stop. But I think that it was narcissistic and sociopathic tendencies, but it's also the psychotropic weapons as well, because they can increase psychosis. Directed energy weapons, depending on where they're fired, it can fuck with your hormones. Um, the, psycho the psychotropic weapons, the frequency weapons, they can cause <coughs> sleep deprivation through anxiety, depression, and well, I can't... Uh, um, anxiety, depression, and psychosis it can cause sleep deprivation. Let me go in the other room. So, it can cause all that. But back to the person that I lived with when I was living with my dad, these neighbors here. Um, it was that one little girl who was always obsessed with me, always obsessed with what I was doing, what I was saying next, because I was a lot sicker back then than I am now. So there was always this obsession over what I was doing. And, you know, there was always this obsession over me. And, yeah. So it was always, like, every single day without fail, it was always what Mad Girl was doing. Um, so that was the first person that I noted that was obsessed with me. The second person was when I was in supported housing. I befriended this person for a certain amount of months. I knew they were a perp. Don't get it twisted. I knew they were a perp. But I decided to entertain the lie just to have somebody to talk to. It's weird, but I was so lonely that the first person who was nice to me, who seemed to genuinely, I seemed to genuinely have a rapport with, like I wanted friendship so bad, I was willing to ignore the fact that I knew they were a perp to be friends with them. So that's my bad, right? But eventually I couldn't pretend anymore. I couldn't pretend that I didn't know. And then the whole Twitter thing started. Now, it actually started with me because I was actually promoting my Twitter account in order to raise awareness of gang stalking, but also to low-key throw shade at people who were harassing me. And I knew they were harassing me. So I did that. And that person became obsessed with me to the point where it was unhealthy. Um, the person who was actually stabbed in the supported housing they weren't actually obsessed with me it was just that they were involved in something they couldn't get out of so basically they were just doing what they could do they were a coward really they were a coward um they were just doing whatever they thought they were doing and they thought they were doing it for their children as well because there's always that one perp who has a family situation and they convince themselves that they're doing it for their kids when really they're just a hot fucking mess but the person who got stabbed by her ex wasn't the one who was obsessed with me it was a different person so after like a solid year or so of being obsessed with me and trying to engage in reactive abuse now this person was tight with certain staff members of Brent Mind as well so put a pin in that so so that that's the person that was obsessed with me they moved out there was another person obsessed with me, but I don't think they were a perp. I think it was something else. <coughs> but then there was a third person who moved in after that, after that white woman. Um, the white woman wasn't a perp, but there was a Somali woman who moved in after her, some months after her. And that was probably the worst form of obsession that I've literally ever had in my life. Like a solid year of harassment. And then closer to the days where I was actually 
closer to the days where I was at, you know, it was a solid year of harassment and closer to the days of actually moving out. Um, this person had been harassing and stalking me for 136 hours. So this person had been hacking into my accounts, knowing, knowing that they were doing it. And Brent Mine knew that they did that because they confessed to it. They confessed to the stalking my social media. They confessed to everything right in front of the, the support workers. The support workers did nothing. They said nothing about it. They didn't get the police involved. Nothing with this person got so obsessed with me that because this reception is crap. Hang on. But yeah, so this person literally got so obsessed with me that there was a friend of theirs <coughs> that I took a shine to. But this person, I didn't realise this person was drunk, but they got a bit aggressive with me, which led me to blur out something about, you know, me being tested or something. And I wasn't entirely sure of what the results are. I just wanted her off me. I didn't know what to say. But what this obsessed person did, she turned it into a story where I tried to rape this drunk girl and deliberately infect her with genital warts. <laughs> she was there. She saw the whole thing. She saw, she saw the whole thing. She saw me turn this person down. She knew that me and this woman liked each other. She saw, she saw me turn this woman down. She saw me saying, no, I'm not sure. Because I didn't even know the woman was drunk. But it, it, something about it just didn't feel right. So I was like, no, nah, let me just, no, nah, let me just back off. She was there the entire time and she's literally going around telling people that I tried to rape this. <laughs> that I tried to rape this woman while she was drunk. <laughs> God. That I tried to rape this woman while she was drunk and deliberately infected with genital warts. So... Let's just say for arguments, I can't even entertain this. At the, I can laugh about it now, but at the time it was like, you literally just accused me of intentional transmission. That carries a maximum of 15 years. And then on top of that, you're accusing me of trying to take advantage of her when she's intoxicated. And that's like 20 years, isn't it? So this person accused me of serious crimes, lie after lie after lie. She even lied to the woman that I liked, that I was obsessed with the woman that I liked and I was trying to break up something between her and a woman that she was really, really in love with. And I'm like, no, I don't like it that fucking much. Like, I don't like anybody that much to try to break up something if it's true love, like, I don't like, I don't like nobody that much. Like, I'm not going to stand in the way of that. Do your thing. But it's like, that's how obsessed they got with me. This person had narcissistic disorder, um, sociopathic disorder, and they were vulnerable to psychosis. So I think that psychotropic weapons were fired on them, just like the psychotropic weapons were fired on the person living next to me, like, you know, like before then. And the thing is, the first person that I lived next to and the third person that I lived next to, they actually knew each other because the mental health circle in London is actually very small. Everybody knows each other, right? <clears throat> so they actually knew each other and they'd been talking to each other about me. So even after the first person left, the first person is the one, the Asian person that I had the altercation with in 2015, that's on video. She and um, the, the Somali woman who's claimed she was a big time drug dealer or what have you, or, you know, that person. So they'd actually known each other and they were actually discussing with one another about me and about what they were going to do about me. This, this obsession got so bad, like it literally lasted until after I left the supported housing. After I left the supported housing. And. This person harassed me and lied about me for like a solid year. And in the final days when I was about to move out of supported housing. 
this person was stalking me for about 136 hours. Them psychotropic weapons, if they were being fired on that woman, they must have done a number on her because it was 136 hours solid. She wasn't sleeping. I mean, even in the 136 hours that she was stalking me, I managed to catch at least some Zs for a couple of hours, like in intervals or something. She was getting no fucking sleep. And she was having a full on breakdown. She was howling. She was fucking screaming. She was saying that when people look into my eyes that like she was sick. She was really, really sick. <coughs> it started off with her being obsessed over me because like she just had narcissistic shit going on. But then it kind of descended into her being genuinely sick. And then I move out. And then the same situation happens again when I move into a self-contained flat only my neighbor kind of pushes herself on me she literally pushes herself on me like like tries to encroach on my boundaries and befriend me like knowing she's a perp and knowing that i'm eventually going to figure her out and she was she was lacking in so much subtlety she i caught her spying on me i literally said what the fuck are you doing threw the wall to her while she was spying on me and it was like a solid year of her spying she was copying like everything that I did. I used to have, I used to scream out loud sometimes because I used to have flashbacks about abuse. So she'd do the same thing to try and wake me up. And she'd throw things at, you know, it got to a point now where she'd throw things at the wall, where she'd turn her speaker towards the wall. And I've got that on tape as well. Um, it's muted. Well, it's muted in the UK anyway, but you can see it in any other country. So you might as well get a VPN and, and fucking end it there. Um, you know, she was obsessed with me for like a full year. And the stuff that she did within that year was crazy. She stole stuff from my flat. She broke into my flat, contaminated my shit with two other people breaking in the flat with her. And I know who they are. And one of them had the fucking gall to be friends with my father. Which really makes me wonder how deep my family are in this shit. So, but those are not the ones obsessed with me, including the one who's friends with my father. They're not the ones who, who are obsessed with me. Imagine, imagine stalking somebody's daughter and having the nerve to be fucking friends with them. My guy, like, that's some wild shit. You couldn't pay me. Listen, I'm getting sidetracked. But anyway, this woman was so obsessed she literally had a breakdown over me like sometimes I'd just laugh at her every single time she tried to distract me from studying tried to distract me from what I was doing tried to engage in reactive abuse I'd just laugh at her and it's usually out of anger but like you know it was literally like bemusing the amount of shit that she would do like it was just ridiculous like huh and then she did finally move out, but it's unclear when because Brent, Mind, neither Brent Mind or Mental Health could stick to their fucking story. And when the Brent Mind staff member told me that this this obsessed person moved out, they they were just giving me this elaborate story. Oh, they've moved in with their sister. I'm like, first of all, you know that me and this neighbor have had beef, and for all I know, I could know where the sister lives. Why the fuck would you tell me? Why would you tell me this? Why are you going to tell me somebody who said they're using weapons on me to stimulate my clit? Because they do have weapons to do that, to stimulate people's sexual organs. I'm not making this up. I've been accusing this person of using DEWs to cause pain here and here. Hey, I've been accusing, I've been accusing this person of coming into my home and stealing my things. I've accused this person of throwing things at the wall, of stalking me. I've accused this person of all these things. And you think to tell me, yeah, yeah, we have experienced it. And you think to tell me as a mental health professional, you think to tell me that this person's staying with their sister. If that is not the most unprofessional thing I've ever heard, how the fuck do you do that? That just demonstrates to me that these people were lying. Because why the fuck would you need to tell me, oh, they've moved in with their sister? Tony H on YouTube. I'll look her up, my darling. Thanks for stopping by, Tony. I've got to keep my voice down. 
why the fuck would you tell me somebody who's accused her of all these things that they've moved in with their sister? That is so, it, like, you've said yourself, you said yourself that I was psychotic, that I was delusional, and that I wasn't well. So why the fuck would you tell somebody that you reported to mental health services that another vulnerable person that she has beef with has moved in with her sister? Are you fucking nuts? Are you absolutely nuts? That's the level of professionalism I was dealing with back in London in that self-contained flat while this woman was obsessing over me and breaking into my shit and tasting my food. And throwing shit at the wall. Screaming. For a full year. <coughs> for a full year until I fucking had enough. And busted down the fucking door. I, fil I filmed that shit. I filmed that shit, put it on YouTube. I bust down the fucking door. Looking for her ass so I could beat her ass. I did that shit. I've done that shit before. Because I don't play that fucking shit. You're going to stalk me for a full fucking year with the bullshit. And I ain't about to do nothing. But again, psychotropic weapon. I think, I think we all do. Hi, Mr. Diaz. You, he, you get hit with frequency in the ear. Okay. I get tinnitus in the ear as well. Lord, many will up Tony as well. They also hit me in the genitals with DEW. We aren't crazy. For me, it can feel like electrocution. <clears throat> okay, Tony says, sometimes the noise you hear can be from the RNM. Look up EEG hetero dining. Tony's absolutely right in all this shit. He's absolutely right. He's absolutely right in all this shit. When you, again, it's like I've said before. I've got to keep my voice down. It's like I've said before, right? Everything that I'm talking about is fucking ridiculous. Every single thing. With something this ridiculous... With something this fucking outlandish, it should be easy to disprove, right? It should be incredibly easy to disprove. Do you feel your thoughts are on broadcast? I don't actually get that, you know? The last time I got that was in, um, when was it? Oh my God, it was so long. Um, it had to be like 2017, 2018, that, around them time there. Um... I'd rather get, not get into the non-remote neural monitoring thing because the thing is, that's very difficult to prove. <coughs> Even if it is true, it's very difficult to prove. So I'd rather not talk about things like that. I'd rather deal with the DEWs. Look, I've got dermatitis on my hand from non-ionized radiation. That's easy to prove. I can't prove that somebody's in my head. Even though we know it can be easily done. We've seen that Jesse Ventura documentary. It can be easily done. Yes, we know. But that's still very difficult to prove because we have to prove where the transmission actually comes from. So I try not to, yeah, I try not to talk about it. You know. I thought of going for a massage yesterday and that street theatre set up ahead of time. Yeah. Again, that's... <coughs> not easy to prove <clears throat> so i stay away from that but um yeah so this person who was obsessed with me they did the most shit they did the mo they were obsessed it was single white female shit and that was for um a full year just like the last one and and like both these people were somalian the the one who was obsessed before that so there was a white lady before the somalian who wasn't so much obsessed with me as kind of scared of everything and she wasn't a perp so the white lady wasn't a perp but the lady before her was a perp and she was southeast actually she was african she was um she was her, her background is asian but i think she comes from like she came from tanzania something like that tanzania or kenya 
Kenya and Tanzania are like in completely different places. I don't know where I'm getting that from. But she's from somewhere in Africa and they all had to move, like her whole family had to move out of Africa. And yeah, so she originally comes from Africa. So yeah, you're noticing a pattern. So <laughs> you must be noticing a pattern by now. So I after that whole debacle in London in the self-contained flat, so the first one that I noted was when I was living with my dad and that family was obsessed with me. And the little girl who was obsessed with me, the youngest one. And then it was um the the very well connected person um in the supported housing the first one that i ran into and then it was the third one that i ran into who was another well connected person through the crime world very well connected um and the asian and the somali woman knew each other and then there was a fourth one who was also somalian woman stalked me for a four year obsessive um, compulsive, narcissistic, sociopathic, all the rest of it, emotionally vulnerable, easy to target with psychotropic weapons. And then after Brighton, after London came Brighton and in the hotel, there wasn't really that much going on. I think there was some perp behavior there, but it wasn't, it wasn't over the top because it was a hotel. Like nobody wanted to act up in a hotel like that. It wasn't a hotel for homeless people either. So nobody's trying to act up in a hotel. So I stayed there for three weeks. Then I moved on into the hostel. Um, I got, I didn't get hit as badly in the hostel because there were too many people there, but I still got hit. And there were a lot of vulnerable people in that hostel. It's mostly men, but there are a lot of vulnerable people in that hostel. There were three people who were obsessed with me, but I think... One of them was a perp anyway, and therefore it was kind of their job to badmouth me to other people. <coughs> the second one I had that kind of this weird emotional attachment to, where I really, really liked the person, but I really didn't like their energy at the same time. So it was like really weird. And then the third one was a racist who was obsessed with me. And I'm like, oh, hang on. I have dermatitis too. The radiation dehydrates our cells. There are there are directed energy weapons out there specifically designed to dehydrate the body. You can find that on Wikipedia. The third one was the third one guy obsessed with me was a racist, but I think it's weird because I know there were a way, like there are abundance of perps in that hostel. That was a perfect breeding ground because it's like there were lots of vulnerable people there, but I couldn't act up that much either because if I did, then I'd probably be kicked out or something. If I wanted to kick somebody's ass, I'd probably be out of my ear because that hostel had already had problems. It already had a kidnapping in that hostel, so they couldn't afford anything like that to happen again. So I think, like, technically that hostel was perfect because they could stalk me and I could react to it, but I couldn't really... Oh no, tell a lie. There was one person who got hyped up on drugs, hyped up on coke. They weren't obsessed with me, but it was like... They tried to jump out the window or some shit. And I'm like, yeah, it was weird. Like, I think the psychotropic weapons were hitting the hostel, but like... Yeah, it's... That's a weird one. There are a lot of perps in and out of that hostel, but it's a weird one. And then came the hotel stays. I thought of building a microwave weapon and beaming the neighbours who hit me with w D W back. But I'm not a piece of shit like them. Even if you did do it back, you still wouldn't be a piece of shit like them. Because think about it, you're not firing it on innocent people, are you? But even so, I don't advise you do that. I don't advise you do that. They're already getting theirs. They're already being hit with frequency weapons and shit. You might as well not bother. You know, you know, you think if people think I look bad. You want to see the fucking perps. You want to see how fucking bad they look. It is constant. Like I'm the only one here. Like I look good. And, you know, in spite of being burned and having, you know, and getting anemia and all that shit, like I look relatively good, even after everything that I've been through. But the perps look a fucking mess, bro. They look a fucking mess. You, you know they're not getting no sleep. And you know they're being hit with these fucking weapons. Same way. 
So it doesn't matter what they do to us, they're always going to get it back for the same reason. They have kids too. I think they purposely moved in perps who had kids. They know I won't do anything because of the kids. Children are very effective weaponized irritants. But I'll get to that, don't worry. <coughs> I'm going down the obsessive roster. So I have multiple people in the hostel obsessed with me. It wasn't because I was special or anything. It was just because, like, some of them were perps. And plus there were psychotropic weapons being fired at the building. And it was actually easier to get me in there because, like I said before, lots of vulnerable people. But, of course, you can't act up. Otherwise, you're out. You're out the door. Um, so after that, after I came out of there a year ago, I went into a hotel in Eastbourne. Um, I suspected that there might be perps. I wouldn't be surprised if there were, but it didn't feel like it. It felt like if there were any perps, then they were more on the street than they were in a hotel in Eastbourne. So I had to move out of Eastbourne after about a month or so. And then I moved into this hotel in Hove. Um, I had a pretty good time when I was there because my friends would come to visit me. And like the beach was just across the road. So my friends would come to visit me. We'd sit out on the beach. Um, but the hotel itself was all right. But it was like... There were two perps living there. One was male and the other was female. The male didn't obsess over me so much because they're male. But the woman perp, I hadn't even met her or knew her name, but she was obsessed, bro. She used to talk about me singing, tried to copy me singing, tried to like, I, I don't know what this bitch's problem was. Like, it's like, I had no idea who she was. Like, but she got obsessed with me the same way. That's what I'm saying. That's the effect the psychotropic weapons have on you. These people get obsessed with you the same way. <coughs> so I had to deal with that bitch. And then on top of, the, on top of it, this guy who was engaging in reactive abuse against me behind a locked door. And yet when he was in front of my face, he tried to, to, tried to befriend me and do all that shit. I'm like, fuck off. So yeah, I had like... That one person obsessed with me, even though I, I knew her name, I, I hadn't met her. And she, she was completely obsessed with me anyway. And then on top of that, came here. Now, there was that one woman who called me a slut through the war. But I don't think she was obsessed with me. I think it was just one of those things where she was just being a cunt. I called the police over it, which... I, I'm glad I did it, but I think it was a minor issue. You could call somebody a lot worse than a slut. And I was reminded of that when this family moved in. So no, until they got here, I had people who were fucking with me, but not people who were um, obsessed with me like that. Um, you know, I had people who were fucking with me, but not obsessed with me like these people are. And just like all obsessions, it always starts off with something relatively small. So because the kid got scared or like most likely got jealous over a fucking laugh, that's what started this whole thing off. The thing with narcissistic abuse and the things with these people being obsessed over me, it's usually with something small. Now, that's with the exception of my father, me living with my father in that family. Because I used to think out loud a lot and I used to do it for hours. So if you're a young family hearing that, you're going to think that something's seriously wrong. So whilst they're scum who engaged in gang stalking in the first place, if they're dealing with somebody who's genuinely sick like that, I get it. So I was genuinely sick at the time, but with these people here, like with, with most of the people after that, it usually started over something small. Now with the family that I was living, that was living alongside my dad, I was sick. So they had a legitimate reason to be afraid of me, even though they're still scumbags because they're still bullying a vulnerable person for being vulnerable. So they're still scumbags. But they don't know the ins and outs of my illness or what's going on. So, like, there's some mitigating circumstances there. With the second person that was obsessed with me when I moved into um, 
when I moved into supported housing. Again, that person's a scumbag and a very well-connected one. But once again, that's understandable because even though she was a perp from the beginning and even though she was passive aggressive and abusive, I think there was some part of her that trusted me because she didn't think that I knew at the time. She didn't think that I knew she was a perp. So there must have been a part of her that trusted me. So she must have felt deceived. That's not a small thing. And especially when she's seeing me diss her on Twitter, that's not a small thing. So we've got two people who are obsessed with me over stuff that is nowhere near justifiable, but at least in the ballpark of understandable. The third person who was obsessed with me, no fucking reason at all. All I did was cut you off after, you, after I found out that you were lying about me. That's all I did. All I did when I found out that you were spreading around, I was trying to... I had genital warts, spreading it around to everybody. That's when I cut you off. And especially when I found out that you were trying to make out like I was obsessed with another woman, like when she had her own life going on. It, it's, it's small. It's a small matter. I cut you off over something completely understandable. You stalked me for an entire year. It was the same with the next woman when I was in the self-contained flat. <coughs> I fucking stopped contact with her over some over behavior that she was engaged in and I said look I don't want to talk to you anymore and ever since then she got worse and worse and worse for a full year and now we're in this situation where I've got somebody obsessing over me over where I fucking sleep over a fucking laugh nah even when I know what's going on even when I know what's going on, I don't fuck with that. I don't fuck with that. I don't fuck with that. And I know that it's, it's partially caused by psychotropic weaponry. I know. But I don't have any sympathy to give anybody upstairs right now. I don't have the sympathy. I'm being tortured every day. And then I have to deal with some naughty bastard being obsessed with me. On some real shit. I don't even care if that person's a kid, man. I don't want to deal with people being obsessed with me every day, every day. I don't want to deal with it. It's my fucking flat. Unless you're paying the rent for it, shut the fuck up. I don't try to talk about where you fucking sleep. In fact, I try my very best not to hear what you're saying about me. That's why I don't sleep. That's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons I don't sleep in my own room. It's because I don't want anyone. I don't want to hear what you're fucking saying about me. I don't want to hear it. Because you're probably going to come up with some fucking garbage anyways. You always come up with some fucking garbage. You always come out with some fucking garbage. I don't want to hear what you have to say. After everything that I've been through, I'm still having to go through this. Over a laugh. I had to go through this for three months. Over a, over a laugh. Imagine over a laugh my guy imagine fucking hell like fucking hell just oh my god So yeah, it's um, it's very likely that the reason why this little girl is obsessing with me is not chiefly because of me. It's very likely that they're firing psychotropic weapons on her because they are able to pick up on her energy more quickly than they are on mine. So she becomes a weaponized irritant, like children, women, vulnerable people, these psychotropic weapons that change your frequency, they're more effective on such people because they're usually emotionally sensitive in the first place. Why do you think us TIs are being bombarded with it all the time? We're emotionally sensitive. And if we're not, we're emotionally beating into being emotionally sensitive. 
because it takes emotionally sensitivity and the density that it comes with in order to make the weapons work effectively. That's the point of this. That's why the perps want me in my own room. That's why they wanted that family upstairs to fuck with me to get me to sleep in my own room because my own room is north facing. And if I'm surrounded by the noise of the nail bar, the noise of the restaurant, and the noise of those fucking screeching monkeys upstairs, then it stresses me out. And if it stresses me out, then my energy is more readable. My energy signature is more readable, which makes the torture more effective. But if I'm sleeping in here and I'm minding my business <coughs> and I'm not as stressed out as I could be, which I'm not, then guess what they're going to do? They're going to go after the next sensitive person and turn them into a weaponized irritant. That person could be a child or an adult. It doesn't matter. What matters is that they're emotionally vulnerable and they already have narcissistic and sociopathic and psychotic tendencies. So it's not all them. But I don't have the fucking sympathy anymore. Now, I did another live because I had to delete the last one. But I'm going to make, at some point again, I'm going to make a whole compilation of the censored stuff so you guys could see it. But anyway, I love you guys. Take care. Before I go, let me read. Let me read what Tony had to say. They tried using their teenage son to provoke my dad. Yeah, Tony's dad. They are not sure provocateurs. They wish. They wish, Tony. Anyway, I've got to go. You take care. Bye, my fellow TIs. Bye-bye.